Okay, so what you're probably wondering right now is what awesome technique is he going to do to escape this? But what you should be asking is how in the did he get there? Um, the problem with training from positions of disadvantage are we ignore the fact that there's a lot of stuff that happened before we got to this position. Okay? Um, look, the, the reality is I've never in my life seen somebody fall from the sky and choke somebody. I, I, I've, I've never seen um, just a cloud of smoke appear and all of a sudden hands are around the throat. Something has precipitated this, right? Something led up to this position. Something led up to, I don't even know, I, get, I could scenario rub this forever. I don't even know what led up to me being face down with him on my back and guns in the back of my head. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, what I know is if you weren't good enough to avoid that, you're not going to be good enough to get out of it. So whatever led to me ending up here, if I couldn't prevent that, then no magic technique on the planet is going to allow me to escape that. Yeah, I can show you a cool technique, and it's awesome, and it sells seminars and books and videos and whatever, but we're ignoring the real issue. Look, if you always train from negative, you know, everybody says, well, train from position of disadvantage, train from negative, blah, blah, whatever. And there's value in training from negative. But if you always train from negative, and you always train your students from negative, then your students will always find themselves at negative. You will always find yourself at negative. Because you're going to miss everything that led up to this. Everything that, again, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to scenario what led up to that, but it's, it's like when we're working with law enforcement. One, one of the things we tell them is, look, if all you train for is retention, then you're going to need it because you're going to miss everything that happened before the bad guy actually got his hand on your gun. Because you're always training from position of a disadvantage. Always. So you're always going to find yourself at disadvantage, at negative. Um, so train at negative, train at position of disadvantage, but it shouldn't be the bulk of your training. It should just be another component of it, another part of it, another aspect, another, another way of enhancing survivability. But if I'm always training, it's like... Um, Headlock from the side is another great example. Well, how many times have you seen where students, especially newer people, will just bail out? They'll, they'll just bail their head out. And repeated dozens of times, hundreds of times in training centers all over the world, this is what, no, 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 no. Let him get the headlock. Let him crank down. Let him pull you in, and then now go. So what we're training people to do is... Forget what your natural response would be. Forget that as the headlights coming on, I feel like I got time and space and range and tactile sensitivity and I can get my head out. Forget all of that. I don't want you to train from here. I want to make it as worse for you as possible. So now, as a student, what I would have naturally done anyway and been more advantageous for me, I'm being forced to not do. It, it, it defies logic. Um, how many times a choke is coming on and, and you're already defending? No, 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 let him get the choke on. Well, okay, sometimes. But if every time that's what's happening, then what, what students in, are being trained to do is stand here, allow the guy to get his hands around the throat, and then go make some kind of defense. What, what we know and we understand is, by and large, the person that goes first is the one that's going to win. Or they're at least going to have the advantage from, from the beginning, and that may be all it takes. So 
if you train if you train with us, you, you know that we deal with this pre-contact phase and this preemption phase and not standing in front of somebody. And you know, I, I saw a video that not too long ago where the defense is a reflexive defense versus a groin kick. Well, A, if I have any reason to believe that Sam is a problem for me, I, why am I standing directly in front of him like this? Why are my hands down? Why am I not angling? Why am I not getting my hands up? Why am I not trying to de-escalate? While I'm trying to de-escalate, why am I not trying to set him up? Why, what's leading me to stand square inside of Sam's elbows right here where I'm vulnerable to a kick to the groin? It just it, it doesn't make sense. Yes, do, do, do people find themselves caught off guard? Do people get caught up in what they're doing in their lives and they, you know, they're surprised? Yes, absolutely. But if that's all they're training for, then that's all they'll ever be. That's where they'll be every single time. Okay. So train from positions of disadvantage. Train from negative, but spend a lot of time on not getting in worst case scenarios. Um, and from our point of view, spend absolutely zero time on things like this. Because again, if you weren't good enough to not end up there, you're not gonna be good enough to escape it. Spend a lot more time on not ending up in that position or in this position or wh whatever it is. Um, and look, I know those things are sometimes cool to train, and you know, they're, they're from a training center perspective, they sell seminars and whatever, but look, I'm never gonna find myself playing in my swimming pool with my kids and all of a sudden a dude pops up from underneath the, the water with an AK-47. That's never gonna happen, ever. So why are you training to defend against a submachine gun in, a, in, in water? What? Two hours a week, that's what most people train. Two hours a week. How are you gonna make them safer in that two hours a week? And as an instructor, you're prioritizing. You're saying, every time you get in front of a group, I'm gonna make you safer today. As an instructor, I'm saying, I'm gonna make you safer today, every time I get up here. And I'm gonna fill that hour with the things that I think are gonna make you safer. You're never gonna come to my class and I'm gonna give you this. You're never going to come to my class and I'm going to give you this. Not a crop my guy class. Maybe if we're playing around sparring, maybe. Um, but that's, even that's a higher level stop. I mean, it's, it's fun to train, but it's, it, it should not be a part of your, your self-defense vernacular. It just doesn't make sense. Train from negative, sometimes. Train from pre-contact, preemption. Um, overall awareness, being first, a lot. Those work.